Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this Thursday, August the 15th, 2019. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that anytime by calling us at 1-800-472-0391. That is your Alaska weather information line. It's open 24 hours a day. A couple button pushes there on the phone will get you to your forecast. And if you write down the numbers or that code that you're going through at the beginning, you don't have to wait for the voice prompts next time. Just go ahead and knock them in there. Weather.gov slash Alaska is your source online for weather information around the Great Land. You can get information about your rivers uh, with the stream gauges from the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center. Aviation Weather Unit is online as well, AAWU for short, and you can get information there about your flying weather, generally below 10,000 feet. If you're looking for more information, go to the Center Weather Service Unit. As always, if there is an earthquake in the region, you'll get more information from the National Tsunami Warning Center located in Palmer, Alaska. And of course, your weather forecast offices in Juneau, Fairbanks, and Anchorage are here to serve you as well. If you can't find what you're looking for, Please do let me know. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is an easy way to find me anytime, and I certainly do like to hear from you. Got a lot going on around Alaska, so let's just get right to it here. We're going to start with what is actively going on. We have uh, flood warnings for parts of the China and uh, many of the streams and rivers around the middle Tanana Valley and the Deltana Tanana Flats region. Uh, more rain is on the way, and really that's the greatest concern for a lot of the rivers there around the interior. Rainfall as much as two inches uh, could fall across some parts of the middle Tanana Valley and into the Denali National Park area as well as the Healy area. Uh, with that, uh, it is possible that we'll see some more rock slides in the region and certainly it rises on local cr uh, creeks and streams. Uh, places like or, uh, rivers like the Nanana and Tanana River will likely rise more slowly. They've got a lot more room to move, so you usually don't see those rapid rises. Uh, on some of our rivers like that, but uh, a wealth of rain is moving eastward. So flood warnings for parts of the interior, including areas around the China, and then certainly flood watches there for areas north of the Alaska Range. Everything else that you see in yellow here is a wind advisory. Wind advisories are posted for strong west winds that could gust up to 40 miles per hour as we go through uh, late tonight into tomorrow morning, and then especially tomorrow morning into the evening hours tomorrow for parts of the interior. Again, you've got flats, the upper 40 mile country, uh, and the upper Tanana Valley, as well as uh, areas around Tanana and the central interior. South of the Alaska Range, now the orange for the Susitna Valley, and uh, the Kenai Peninsula, and western parts of Prince William Sound is a fire weather watch. Again, a red flag or a fire weather watch, uh, generally speaking, for uh, dry conditions and mainly due to the winds coming through the region. As a weak frontal boundary comes through, it does look like there will be the opportunity to enhance fire danger. It's not going to be hot and dry, but it will be windy. And with already dry fuels on the ground, if a fire were to start, it could grow very quickly. So a fire weather watch will be posted for parts of the Susitna Valley, the western Kenai Peninsula, and western Prince William Sound, parts of the eastern Kenai Peninsula. Not for the Anchorage area right now, although a burn ban is still in effect according to the municipality. So make sure you check on conditions before you do any burning. Uh, something else that might be interested to, for folks there around the Kenai Lake region, a new webcam has been uh, installed and is now available to be seen from the Weather Forecast Office here in Anchorage. If you go to weather.gov slash AFC or slash Anchorage, either one will work, you can see the Snow Glacier Dam Lake. This is near the Seward area. It drains into the Kenai, but the new webcam is overlooking the Snow Glacier Dam Lake. And uh, the Weather Service hydrologists and meteorologists are now able to monitor the lake elevations before a release happens. So what will happen is uh, we'll watch for the lake level to rise. And you'll be able to see this as things are filling up and it is not trickling out as it normally does a little bit. It will get gummed up and the lake will start to rise. And uh, hydrologists and meteorologists will be able to say, hey, uh, you know, a glacial dam release is near and issue flood warnings for folks downstream. Uh, it's especially important if you are downstream, you can see uh, the uh, Kenai come up fairly quickly. The river may come up quickly in the upper parts of the river. And uh, it looks like the next release is due really any time, uh, summer or fall. It's not imminent, but uh, we are expecting that conditions are 
heading toward that release at some point in the near future as far as glacial dam lakes go. And uh, so this is a new tool that we will use to keep people safe and keep you informed. If you want to keep track of that, that is, uh, here's the Snow Glacial Dam Lake way up here. Uh, here is Seward. So Seward would be that way on this bigger picture. And the stream gauge is right here. And then this is Kenai Lake as you're driving through. So many of you have probably gotten very close to it and had no idea. In the meantime, fire danger updated today. You'll notice we have increased fire danger around southwest, parts of south central, Susitna Valley, and the Copper River Valley, of course, and still across northern parts of southeast. No big change there again. So high fire danger continues. Now for the interior, things have really settled down. No surprise there. Look at the stream of moisture being pumped into the bearing and into the central interior. Remember last week when we were talking? We're going to talk about this again coming up in the aviation forecast, but we were talking about the jet stream coming in from the north and the Pacific jet stream coming in from the south and meeting up over the interior. That is exactly what has happened. And because of that moisture meeting up with the cold air and that upper level storm energy, we're able to crank out a tremendous amount of rain in this one area. This is where that moisture is focusing right now. So tonight and into tomorrow, another one to two inches of rain may fall across this region. And we've totally flipped the weather story. Usually it's south central and southwest and southeast that are just soaking in late summer and early fall. Not the case this time. Usually it is not the interior that's soaking wet. It is usually south central, southwest, southeast. And instead it is the interior. And that is having some uh, pretty big impacts across uh, travel conditions. Uh, through the National Park at times and uh, certainly many other places likely seeing uh, some pretty soggy conditions because of this copious amounts of rain. Low pressure sitting out west, west of Shemi. You can see that broad southerly flow reaching in and kind of a slow moving boundary just snaking its way right through the interior and into western Canada. In the meantime, very weak disturbances working through southeast, but another one is on the way and it looks like as we head into the weekend, one of these systems will make its way through the region that could induce some stronger winds, maybe up to gale force, in fact, across the inside passage there and bring seas up to about 10 feet. So if you have plans to go out on the boat or the ship or the dinghy, whatever it may be this week in southeast, make sure you're tracking the weather there because it does look like the winds are going to come up. And even on the inside passage, you might get a pretty good blow as we go through your Saturday and Sunday. On the infrared picture, you can see that moisture trail a little more cleanly out across the west and how that puffs its way into the interior there across south central southwest. Plenty of sunshine today, plenty of warmth, unusually warm and certainly so for July. Here's a weather map. Low pressure up across Chukchi now at uh, 1,016 millibars. High pressure is already moving in behind that, forcing that moisture channel further and further south. This is going to be rainy tonight and tomorrow across the interior. South central, you can see low pressure sitting just south and east of the Kenai and south of Prince William Sound. High pressure sitting across the Gulf, 1,032 millibars there south of Sand Point, helping to squish that wind out across the Aleutians, drawing in a very steady stream of Pacific moisture into the interior and then channeling that all the way into uh, the central and western parts of our state. For southeast, things are dry. South central, southwest, things are dry. Stable air across the southern bearing, even chipping away at the clouds there. As we head into tonight, that high pressure ridge is going to be rough, tough, and hard to bluff. 1,036 millibars there is not going anywhere because it doesn't have to. That's going to keep that next weather system out to the west, and that's going to bend that moisture across into the central interior. Low pressure moving into the upper Koyukuk, 1,017 millibars, areas of rain and fog, generally north of the Alaska Range. Up north, doesn't look like it's going to be cold enough to snow just yet. There might be some hints of it up there across northern parts of the uh, Canadian provinces. Showers across the Dixon entrance, maybe, just maybe, working their way into Ketchikan and Annette. Out west, low pressures down to 991 millibars. Rising a little bit more on Friday, 995. You can see that front is still moving generally south to north. The next wave of cooler air is trying to work its way in across the Alaska Range. This front's really going to have a tough time making it all the way across. Most of the time, fronts don't do that. It does look like, though, we're going to get a pretty good pressure gradient going across the interior. With that, winds will come up, especially tomorrow afternoon. And westerlies up to 40 miles per hour are possible across some parts of the interior again, so wind advisories are hoisted for you. And once again, flood warnings are posted for areas around the middle Tananaw Valley and the China generally around the Fairbanks region. And south of that, especially along the Alaska Range, one to two inches of rain may fall. So flood watches are posted for some of those areas. As we get into your Saturday, things dry out fairly quickly. Notice that pressure gradient still with us, though, across south central and all the way across southwest. 
That's going to keep the wind moving. It will be a little more breezy than it has been. And then here's that low that we were talking about moving through southeast. Notice how the lines of constant pressure here, our isobars drawn in black, are pretty much stacked right over southeast. And that means high pressure here with all the air wants to push all of that air into the vacuum that is this low pressure system here. And that means we're going to have a lot of wind working right into this low. That's going to bring up the seas pretty quickly. That's probably going to bring conditions uh, down for many folks, as well as uh, ceiling and visibility, and your seas are going to come up to maybe as much as 10 feet, even on the inside passage, which is probably not what you're used to. So be careful out there. Plan for it. You know now, Saturday and Sunday are going to be a little bit on the snotty side in southeast. Say that five times fast. And now you know, rain and wind for Saturday. Low pressure across the west, 1,010 millibars there. That is still bringing in a healthy amount of wind across the central and western chain. Maybe not as worse as what our friends in southeast will be dealing with, but the winds will be coming up for areas all the way from Shemya and Attu to uh, Adak and Atka. And you'll start to see a little bit more of a breeze around Nikolsky, but uh, not too fast. Let's take a look at temperatures in the morning. Mid to upper 50s for southeast, south central. Still in the upper 50s, very mild here for Kodiak, 60 degrees. Upper 40s and lower 50s for the interior. Into the north slope, upper 30s there for Utkiavik to Kaktovik. 47 in Nome, 50s for southwest. The Alaska Peninsula, Cold Bay, False Pass, Sand Point, King Cove. All very mild, nearly 50 in St. Paul. A high of 55 on Friday. South Central, look at this. Oh my goodness, that's warm. Lower to mid 70s in some cases. That's atrocious for August. Mid to upper 60s for southeast. Very mild for the interior. Still holding around 60 with rain and clouds and wind. 40s for the North Slope. Overnight lows, it doesn't look like anyone is that close to freezing with the exception of Anaktuvik Pass. Southeast, lower to mid-50s. Kodiak, 57. Bristol Bay, lower to mid-50s there. 51 in Bethel. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And with a lot of Pacific moisture still moving through the region, the ridge of high pressure pulling that northward, we're going to start off your Friday morning with quite a bit of IFR across the YK Delta and the Bering and the Aleutian Chain, of course, also on the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range and pushing into the Yukon and Tanana Valleys and all across the Gulf and into southern parts of southeast. Also look for IFR across the North Slope. With marginal conditions, really, most of the mainland, there you will see some VFR holes there across the Yukon Flats, parts of South Central, including areas around Anchorage and Lake Hood especially, uh, out around Tanita Pass, and also across parts of uh, the Barren Islands and into areas near Sand Point. Now as we go through the afternoon on Friday, you'll notice the IFR kind of shifting around a little bit in the east uh, part of the Gulf there. Marginal conditions there for most of the inside passage. South Central to southwest, even Bristol Bay and Lake Iliamna and down the Alaska Peninsula coastline. Uh, likely to see at least some periods of VFR. Notice VFR stretching out across some of your Brooks Range passes. Uh, IFR lingering across the Beaufort Sea Coast, but a wide swath of marginal conditions continue across the mid sections and the west stays under IFR. No big change out there as we head into Saturday morning. IFR lingers across the Beaufort Sea Coast. Great deal of improvement though for the Yukon Valley up to VFR by Saturday morning. Looking for some marginal conditions to set in from Shishmaresh all the way down to uh, probably Deering and just south of Kotzebue. And then also looking for marginal conditions around the Alaska Range, south central, including the Kenai Peninsula, most of Prince William Sound, and the northern parts of southeast will hover at VFR, it looks like, for the morning with IFR south of Juneau, south of Sitka, all the way into Ketchikan, Wrangell, and uh, Petersburg, and Annette. As we get into the afternoon Saturday, great deal of improvement. Look for drier conditions there with VFR for most of the interior, as well as west, southwest, Kodiak Island, south central, most of southeast looking at VFR. South of Ketchikan and Annette, you're probably looking at at least marginal conditions and maybe flirting with IFR south of Hyder. IFR for St. Paul and St. George on Saturday. Here's your pass conditions now for your Friday. Anaktuvik and Attigan Pass, we expect to see IFR in the morning. It does look like there could be some improvement there, maybe as much as marginal conditions as you go through your day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass looks like marginal weather most of the day. Rainy Pass also going for MVFR all of your Friday. Same goes for Windy Pass, marginal there. Isabel Pass starts at IFR with some improvement through your Friday afternoon. We expect a little bit of improvement in what you see in the morning from uh, Mentasta Pass, probably heading for MVFR. Tanita Pass, marginal early on, but then a quick change over to VFR. So good news if you need to get uh, through the hills there. And Portage Pass looks like marginal to start with a great deal of improvement. Saturday looked pretty good too. Chilkoot and White Pass, looking at marginal weather there most of your Friday. 
Take a look at the freezing levels. I admit, I've been off for a couple days, so I hadn't been checking the weather as much as I normally do, but I was really impressed when I saw this today. Here is the four and 6,000 foot freezing level coming into uh, Kotzebue and Shishmaref on the northern parts of the Seward Peninsula, meeting up with a 16,000 foot freezing level tomorrow morning, just south of McCoriac and over St. Paul and St. George. Folks, this is a lot of hot air, hot air for August, very hot. And this is the signs of what we would normally expect to see over more parts of Alaska this time of the year. This is really close together, and I'll show you the reason why that's happening here in just a minute. Stick with me. 2,000 foot levels up in the north, 14,000 foot levels. Again, very hot air, not as hot as what you see over here, but very hot air here over the Gulf. This is impressive stuff. The risk of icing is pretty minimal. It's above nine, and I even stretched it down a little bit, maybe even 10,000 feet across northern parts of Alaska. We have a lot of warm air in place. The risk of freezing right now is very minimal, so I'd, I wouldn't worry about the icing potential below 10,000 feet for the most part. We have a huge dip in the jet here across the western bearing in the North Pacific. We have our Arctic jet trying to punch into the northwestern territories of Canada. It's meeting up with a Pacific jet right over the interior. This is the reason we are having so much rain right now across the interior. We talked about this last week. When those two jets come together, a lot of weather happens, and that's what's been happening right over the interior. No big change there, but this reason right here is why we have a great deal of heat over Alaska right now. At north and northwest, uh, we've got our winds coming into the northwestern coast, anywhere from 40 to 55 knots across the interior. Northwesterlies continue into the Gulf, high pressure sitting across the Alaska Peninsula. Southerlies continue to pump heat and moisture into the western bearing and eventually back into the interior. At 3,000 feet, north and northwesterlies coming in again, and that's going to usher in some slightly cooler weather perhaps later into the week for south central. In the meantime, winds anywhere from 30 to 40 knots. In the west, southerlies continue 20 to 40 knots across the chain. Uh, southeast, you're looking at winds from the north and northwest, 15 to 20 knots. Turbulence, we have oodles across the interior especially. Uh, considerable moderate should be widespread also across south central, parts of the Brooks Range, the northwest coast, and the Aleutians. The North versus the South. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky tonight. Hey, Dean, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, right? Uh, for the most part. And the moon, planets, and stars rise in the east and set in the west, too? Uh-huh. Ah, so how do the stars move in the north and the south? Oh, I see where this is going. We're going to do some spinning in this episode, aren't we? Yep. First, we're going to show you the stars and constellations you can find when you face north and south after dark. And then we'll demonstrate how the sky seems to move over the course of each night in each direction. Hold on tight, let's get spinning. Okay, we have our skies set to 10 p.m. facing north any night this week. What's the first thing you notice? The Big Dipper, of course. It's about halfway up in the northwestern sky. Four brighter stars make a cup, and three more make a curved handle. And since we're facing north, the North Star, or Polaris, should be there too. It's not terribly bright, but it should be as bright as the Big Dipper stars. There it is, about halfway up in the sky. The North Star is part of the Little Dipper, but good luck trying to find that. Four of its seven stars are too faint to see in most cities. But finding the North Star is simple when you have the Big Dipper around. Simply connect the dots on the two spoon stars. Continue that line over to the right and you'll run smack dab into the North Star. And if you continue that line, hop over to another recognizable group of stars. They look like the letter W. Yep, and this is the constellation Cassiopeia the Queen. I know it doesn't look much like a queen, but the W could be her crown. Mm, I can picture that but the crown looks bent on one side. Ah, I'll show you why as we go for a spin. As the night moves on, the stars in the north move like this. Notice they seem to rotate around a central point, the North Star. It's also called Polaris because it's our pole star, the star that just happens to be above our North Pole. Yeah, like 432 light years above our North Pole. But as the Earth spins, the stars seem to make a counterclockwise circle around this spot. 
as the night rolls on, the Big Dipper gets lower while Cassiopeia rises higher up. As daytime comes on, the stars are still there. We just can't see them with all the sunlight. But they continue to move around Polaris, and as we move toward afternoon, the Big Dipper is high in the sky, and Cassiopeia bonk, <laughs> bonks her head on the ground. Ah, that's why her crown is bent. Exactly. Now let's face south. It's 10 p.m., and we have two great summer constellations just above the horizon. Scorpius is on the right, and Sagittarius is on the left. You can recognize Scorpius by the bright red supergiant star called Antares. Antares can be really twinkly when it's low in the sky and thus stands in for the scorpion's beating heart. Chasing the scorpion is the constellation Sagittarius the Archer. He's a centaur, half man, half horse, with an arrow notched in his bow. In reality, the stars you can see look more like a teapot than a centaur. You should also see two other bright night lights in the south. Those are the planets Jupiter and the constellation Ophiuchus, and Saturn is in Sagittarius. Cool, and don't be surprised to see the moon passing through these planets in a couple of weeks. So, in the south, look for Scorpius and Sagittarius with the planets Jupiter and Saturn among the stars. And in the north, look for the Big Dipper, Polaris, and Cassiopeia. Hey James, can we spin the Earth really fast just for fun? And show days and nights fly by? Uh-huh. Okay, hold on. Whoa! <laughs> Keep looking up! <laughs> And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with another sea ice update for you. No major change. One thing that we're going to watch over the next several days, though, is with the jet stream working its way over Alaska, uh, the opportunity is there to pull in some of these looser pieces from the marginal ice zone and bring them closer to the coast. But there's a lot of room to move there, too, and a lot of warm water. So anything that's moving southbound is probably going to experience at least some melting because of that warmer water. So not a whole, whole lot of hope to bring any of this uh, substantial ice closer to the coastline right now. And as such, we haven't had such a great view from the satellite's perspective because of the stormier conditions there across the Arctic at this point. This is the latest information as of August 15th. You can always check out the latest forecast and seasonal outlook at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Now, as we've been talking about throughout the show, winds are gonna come up across southeast because of that low pressure system dropping southward uh, through the uh, southeastern archipelago as we get into Saturday and Sunday. As we get into Friday, winds will first come up around the Lynn Canal. Southerlies at 25 knots, four foot seas there, but still looking at light winds and smaller seas across most of the outer coast, five to six foot seas on the outside as we head into Friday. Look at Saturday though. Northerlies really come up sharply from Yakutat all the way down to Cross Sound. North and northeasterlies, 35 knots or so with nine to 10 foot seas, eight to nine foot seas south of Port Alexander and Sitka all the way to the Dixon entrance. Southerly still holding in Clarence Strait at 15 knots, but north of that, much different weather. 35 to 40 knot winds, gale force there on the inside passage, seven to eight foot seas. Don't be surprised to run into 10 foot seas across some parts of the inside as we get into Saturday. So a sharp difference in the weather on Saturday. It could continue into Sunday. And as such, be prepared. If you're going out on Friday, the weather conditions on Saturday are going to be remarkably different because of the wind. So be prepared for that and make sure you have a place to tuck in and, and hold on if you need to there if you're going to be out on Saturday. Westerlies going in through the Prince William Sound, reaching 15 knots, 2 foot seas there, 8 to 12 foot seas coming into the Barrens. A strong wind coming across the Barrens there through that channeled terrain. And then once you get north of that, much different. Southwesterlies, not so bad, 10 to 20. 
looking at four foot seas from Kenai down toward Homer. As you get into Saturday, northerlies are coming in. Those are going to pick up again just as what we saw in the southeast. The stronger gradients well out to the east, but we're still going to get some of that residual flow coming through Cook Inlet and the Barrens, 25 to 30 there. Four foot seas on the inside, seven, eight foot seas across north and western parts of the Gulf on Saturday for the Bristol Bay region. Westerlies, 20 knots, four foot seas, lighter wind, smaller seas down the coast, a west and northwesterly flow coming out of Port Hyden all the way down towards Sandpoint. Chillicoff Strait, westerlies, 20 knots and four foot seas. There's seven foot seas east of Kodiak Island. And northerlies are back in the picture again, all due to low pressure well across the Gulf and southeast. 15 to 20 knots here, looking for six to nine foot seas in the region around Kodiak Island, four foot seas around Bristol Bay, five foot seas south of Sandpoint out toward Falls Pass. Across the illusions now, a south and easterly flow feeding into the next low pressure system well off to your west. 15 to 35, the strongest of which coming in right along the frontal boundary there across the central chain. 12 to 16 foot seas with that south and easterly flow up to 35 knots. Again, these are all sustained winds, not gusts, so there could be some sharper blows in there. A south and easterly flow, 25 to about 35 knots from Adak to Atka, 9 to 16 foot seas on either side. 15 knot winds coming in from the east across Kiska to Shemya. A stronger 35 knot wind from Adak to Kiska, though, so watch for that. Southeasterlies across the eastern chain, only three to six foot seas there. Much different along that frontal boundary that'll be parked in the same old spot. As you get across the west, a light north and westerly flow, 15 to 25 knots around Norton Sound to St. Lawrence Island, south and southwesterlies coming in to the Yukon and Kuskokwim Delta, especially Kuskokwim Delta, looking at 15 knots and five foot seas. Saturday, we get a little bit more of that northerly influence again, all because of that low pressure system on the east. One exception will be St. Matthew's southeasterlies, 25 knots and 8 foot seas there on Saturday. Across the north slope, northerlies, 20 knots. You're looking at 8 to 9 foot seas for the Beaufort, northeasterlies coming in and curling around into Cotsview Sound, 20 knots and 4 foot seas there on Saturday. A little bit of a faster flow around the Chukchi coast. That diminishes as we get into Saturday, 10 to 15. 3 to 5 foot seas there, northwesterlies from Kaktovik to Utkiavik, anywhere from 15 to 25 knots on Saturday, 4 to 5 foot seas. Let's recap your weather tonight. Low pressure is working across the Arctic in the Brooks Range as that brings in moisture from the Pacific. We'll be looking at one to two inch rainfall possibilities across the interior up to the Alaska Range. On top of that, it is going to bring up the wind. Wind advisories are posted for many of our central and northern interior locations for gusts that could reach up to 40 miles per hour starting tomorrow and into tomorrow afternoon. So it will be windy. It will likely be rainy as well, especially as you head south of Fairbanks. Now this wind is going to move southeast uh, into southeast as we head into your Saturday. Watch for gale force winds moving through the inside passage. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.